G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aussie Starcraft as we bring you a continuation in our casting of MLG's Game On that took place very recently. We're currently in day four of the group stage of this tournament, Group D just finishing up. This is a final series of matches from this stage of the tournament. In the bottom left hand corner of Frost is our purple Zerg player, it's going to be Aces Scarlet. In the top of the left hand corner is our red Protoss player, it's going to be EG's in control. So I think both these players are very well known for their antics are both in game and on the air. It's going to be a very exciting uh, Protoss versus Zerg game here. So super stoked to see what these players break out. Of course, uh, Frost being a very large map, we have all sorts of options for either player. We could see some sort of uh, tight early timing attack, so we could see it develop into quite a lengthy macro game. So uh, we'll see what these two have on our hands. Of course, uh, we know that Scarlet's great love for the Protoss uh, is is no secret. Uh, her, her feelings on them are well known. I was actually uh, reading one of her Reddit uh, interviews the other day and I thought it was quite funny when she was asked what she would do for balance she said she'd delete Protoss and start them again from scratch which I thought was pretty classic Scarlet and uh, we all we all know and love her so we'll, we'll see how uh, she goes against in control these two duking out here for the final seed in the uh, round of eight so uh, both both these players obviously are fighting for their final chance to progress in this tournament and uh, Scarlet off to a little bit of a rocky start in the group stage but uh, it got a got a composure you back and seems to be doing quite well now. We'll see if In Control is able to hold on to the early momentum that he had or whether uh, whether the Queen of Blades will send him down in flames here. So, very excited for game number one. Of course, it is a best of three series, so uh, both these players uh, have to take two games in order to uh, carry this series. Look like uh, In Control is going to be delaying his hatch going down for just a little bit, but Scarlet's going to manage to throw that one down. Overlord's going to find uh, In Control's base. We actually see in control going for a forge fast expand and we haven't seen very many of these recently generally we're seeing uh, gateway expands protected by a mothership core but uh, looks like in control wants to break things down and go just a little bit old school and we'll see how scarlet uh, reacts that scarlet of course going hatch bef uh, going pull before hatch is a is a much much uh, more aggressive less macro orientated sort of style so we'll see if uh, Scarlet decides to in fact macro up here or whether she decides to uh, go for some sort of two base timing attack to break the Protoss base open. Very very interested to see how uh, this Forge Fast Expand holds up. We have the Photon Cannon going down now and the Gateway is going to seal up the majority of this gap. Scarlet of course going to be uh, scouting out with these links, probably taking up position on the Watchtower. Looks like Scarlet's actually going hunting for prospective uh, proxy pylons. This location on the opposite side of the map very popular for hiding hiding pylons because it means you can trickle zealots into the third base quite consistently and Scarlet actually throwing down a very quick third base so th this will be very interesting to see how this plays out. Quick third base particularly at this location quite hard to defend. Proxy pylon could uh, prove itself very troublesome. I like in Control's idea of hiding here. You can tuck it up in the base here, it'll be fairly safe and invisible from the low ground, and it'll allow them to warp in zealots here and move them straight across the bridge. So quite short travel time. These Zerglings are going all out to try and find the pylon, but looks like uh, looks like actually Scarlet's waypoint may find this quite quickly. So uh, ni nice scouting effort from Scarlet, and as, as, as we know the game's all about vision, and Scarlet's certainly uh, not falling down that department today. As we take a look at In Control's base, looks like his cyber core is just coming up now. Nexus Nexus has completed in his natural and is uh, starting to get quite saturated. So uh, stop creating probes momentarily. Looks like we'll be chrono boosting them out uh, two at a time now to try and make up for that. It looks like this pylon will be established. So these Zerglings going to continue to uh, chase it, chase down this worker, but uh, at least Scarlet's now aware. If we if we check Scarlet's position, actually Scarlet not aware of the pylon, didn't manage to make it up. Unfortunately. Uh, Choosing, choosing to chase the probe rather than, uh, rather than the uh, look for the pylon. I imagine Scarlet will have some inkling that that is in fact up there, as as the probe was caught in that location. Seconds are going to be scouting out for a potential Protoss third base, and uh, his vantage point uh, up on this cliff here should give him great vision of, of when this base is thrown down. Should be just enough to see the corner of a Nexus built there, and I like I like that uh, scouting choice from Scarlet give her an excellent idea of when that third goes down. 
because the third is certainly the pressure point for uh, a Protoss player. If you can stop them from establishing that third base, you will be able to bleed them out, whereas once a Protoss player secures that third base, it, it generally gives them a critical mass to make them exceptionally dangerous in the mid to late game. Now, uh, in control, still relatively light on the, on the troop count. Warp gate coming up now it is a little bit delayed given uh, the forge fast expand, but uh, and we have a number of number of sentries being created now. I'm wondering if we're going to see a robo thrown down. In fact, we are tucked away here next to the cannon. Sentry is going to be able to prevent overlords from scouting this too easily, and uh, it looks like we may be actually seeing. Some some sort of sentry immortal timing. So a nice a nice uh, choice, particularly against Scarlet's quick three bases, is going to give her an excellent uh, is going to give him an excellent opportunity to try and break the Zerg force. We'll see we'll see how he goes with those force fields. They are of course all important. We have a third base actually going down for in control now, so uh, it's going to going to be quite nicely protected. The gate the additional gateways for this play coming down in the third base location. Five gates going to seal that off quite well and I like the shape of that defense. going to be very Zergling proof. Zerglings will be able to make it inside but uh, not to the cannon which should be able to clean them up quite nicely. We have a couple of observers being chrono boosted out now. A few Zerglings also going to be scouting around the map. This pile and actually going to be uh, if we check out uh, in controls vision he can in fact see this hatchery going down so we'll be able to warp in zealots right next to this base. A little bit of an oversight from Scarlet, not managing to find that pile. Knew the probe was over there, but uh, unfortunately not quite finishing off the scout. We'll see if in controls in a position to warp in some units there. Certainly, as these five gateways finish up, we'll be in a position to uh, spare quite a few units. I wonder if these zerglings are going to be detailed to find those pylons. If these zerglings move out before the pylons clean up, it is, it is unfortunately going to allow allow uh, in control to pick off this base very quickly. You see a massive macro game out of Scarlet. 73 workers to 57. It's a considerable uh, economic advantage. We have the Mutalisks almost ready to pop. The uh, Spire just concluding now. And enough Mutalisks for at least a 10 Muta tech switch behind these. Few uh, drones being transferred over. Going to be great gas income now as Scarlet has the gas from four bases. Uh, being mined fairly consistently. A few zealots actually being warped in here and now, so this base is going to come under threat very quickly. Mutal is going to be a potential option for clean out. Scarlet actually uh, looks like Scarlet may be scouting with this worker. I, I doubt she's establishing yet another base, but more zealots being warped down the low ground. There's going to be 10 zealots at extreme close quarters. This hatchery going down very fast. These uh, plus one upgraded zealots certainly going to be quite uh, devastating. Zerglings moving in here to sniper. This is quite a heavy resource investment. Going to be 800 minerals going down. Unfortunately a hatchery being sniped is a big deal for Scarlet and uh, she would have much, much preferred to uh, keep that hatchery in play as, a, as opposed to uh, the delay of having to throw down another one. So going to be another minute and 40 before that hatchery will be back online. But we do have our first muters on the field. Got 13 muters already in play and plenty more came up behind it. Four at a time plus one attacks also on the way and Currently all in control has for defense is a few photon cannons at, at this location. So can Scarlet actually uh, snipe the pylon? May want to actually get the pylon before these come up. Muta's not wanting to take too much damage there, but grabbing the photon cannons always very valuable. And uh, surprisingly enough, this robotics facility not, not actually producing any immortals as of yet. If we check the units have, no, in fact, no immortals. The only units that's been used to produce are those observers, and uh, sight always very important. But nice micro from Scarlet's going to going to harass this base, clean up a few workers, and snipe the uh, snipe the photon cannon. So no, nice use of the of the mutilus micro, but uh, in control able to force them away with the photon overcharge. The real question is how is in control going to defend against the uh, continuation of these attacks? There are five stalkers on the field, but it is just five stalkers plus two attack, no armor upgrades. Quite easy to pick those off with mutilus or zerglings, and exceptionally difficult for in control to move out at this stage of the game. So we'll see uh, what what in control decides to do here. There's a few corruptors coming up as well to assist. These uh, the stalker's actually going to be able to hold off quite well with a second photon overcharge. However, unfortunately, that mothership core is now out of energy and is going to leave Scarlet in a great position to engage his Protoss force. Actually, going to get them between the two bases. Nice force field's going to protect from a lot of the zerglings, but a few still managing to make it inside. Great uh, use of the zerglings. They are going to clean up all of those sentries and uh, the Stalker's forced to blink backwards, so in control rely on just pure Blink Stalker here to try and defend Scarlet. 
with uh, 20 Mutalists still in play, going to be able to do a lot of damage, and unfortunately for In Control, not going to be able to, uh, not going to be able to move out anytime soon. These these 10 odd Stalkers going to going to suffer a lot of damage from these Zerglings. Plus one zero Zerglings, not not the best upgrades, but certainly more than enough to put pressure on these Stalkers. We have Scarlet actually even uh, using the Corruption ability on the. Uh, on the cybernetic score, on, on, yeah, on the cybernetic score, and how often do we see that? Going to delay the upgrades for these Phoenix. We have in control trying to do a sky transition here. He's got uh, three Stargate in play. It's a substantial investment there. These Phoenix going to be trying to uh, suck up some of the damage from these Mutalists, but unfortunately the Corruptor's going to eat all that damage. Corruptor's going to go straight for the Mothership Core, and in control's going to GG out of that game as Scarlet bludgeons her way into the main base. So, excellent game from both our players. Unfortunately for in control, not managing to move out of his base in time. Did Scarlet just uh, go in absolute boss mode on the macro once she'd cleaned out that pile and she has established a fourth, a fifth base, and you can see even throwing down a sixth base in the top corner of the map. So Scarlet just going absolutely berserk with her macro recently. We've seen her do this runaway sort of expand style. She's she's taken what was the usual Zergling, Baneling, Mutalus micro that we see out of a lot of uh, that composition that we see out of a lot of Zerg players lately and actually taking to the extreme now that she's got the map control, just expanding relentlessly behind it so that she can persistently macro at this level and just it's a absolutely paying dividends for it, allowed her to cleanly take game one. We'll see if In Control's able to fight his way back in game number two, or whether Scarlet's going to take a 2-0 series and progress to the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. There's going to be plenty more coming up here on Aussie StarCraft, so please, by all means, subscribe to the channel, let your friends know that we're casting MLG's game on, and uh, we'd love to see him here too. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. We'll catch you all in the next cast.